His findings contain strong and racist language from the outset. The program also contains some strobe lighting. I have been PC2210 of Greater Manchester Police for the past seven months. But I am also a journalist for the BBC. I was doing both jobs in order to investigate racism in the police. But my double life ended this August when I was arrested. It's 24 hours since my release from police custody. On Friday afternoon, I was intercepted by two internal affairs officers. I can't express the shock that I experienced when they arrested me for deception. We had no idea they would pose to arresting me. In fact, I was looking forward to the time that I would no longer wear the police uniform. The plan was to leave the force and reveal the disturbing conclusions of my investigation. I'd assumed it would be some of my fellow recruits who would be in deep trouble. A dog was born in a barn. It's still a dog. A packy born in Britain. It's still a fucking packy. I was stopping because he's a packy. Sad, isn't it? But I would. He's a packy. I'm stopping. Because I'm fucking English. <laughs> Asian packy. It's fucking built in, lad. It's built in since you were fucking two. I class them as one thing and that's it. Packies. These racist views came from new recruits to the police service who joined alongside me and they are enough to earn any officer the sack. We apply to a police service that is still reeling from being labelled institutionally racist. The investigation looked at two things, police practices and policies and individual officers. And despite many commendable new policies and training initiatives, I discovered a minority of officers who held extreme racist views. This was my class at Bruges National Police Training Centre in Warrington. More than a thousand officers are trained here each year. The 18 of us in class 6 spent 15 weeks together and I am sure that the majority will not be racist officers, but some are. The task of infiltrating the UK's second largest police force was a daunting one. In order to prepare myself for the job ahead, I had immersed myself in the history of the unhappy state of police and race relations in Britain. It was the brutal murder of Stephen Lawrence in 1993 that transformed these relations. Stephen Lawrence, come. Yes, Lord. What are your thoughts on this? Isn't it good how good memories don't fade? He fucking deserved it. His mum and dad are fucking pair of sponges. And they've fucking seen a good opportunity and sponged it for everything they can get their hands on. Including their MBE. What do you think about the boys that done it? They fucking need fucking diplomatic immunity, right? <laughs> they are done for this country what others <coughs> fucking should be. <sighs> McPherson report. I remember it as if it was yesterday. That's fucking kicking the bollocks for any white man that was. PC Pooling's astonishing attack on an innocent murder victim and his family was because he blamed them for causing the entire police service to be branded institutionally racist. This label was applied after the failure of police in London to successfully prosecute a gang of white youth suspected of the murder, even though the police filmed them boasting that they wanted to kill black people. It led to the most high-profile inquiry ever into the police service. The McPherson report blamed not just individuals, but the institution itself, concluding that racism caused errors in an investigation that meant even now, those suspected of killing Stephen Lawrence walk free. Greater Manchester Police accepted that it was institutionally racist. We do live in a, a, a society that has got institutionalised racism. GMP, therefore, uh, has institutionalised racism, and it is our responsibility and duty to try and make sure that A, that's eradicated, and B, that it doesn't interfere with the discharge of our responsibilities to the community. We made our application to Greater Manchester Police. Manchester has an ethnic minority population of 6%, one of the highest in the UK. 
but the force is falling significantly short of new Home Office targets with less than 3% of officers from ethnic backgrounds. An immediate problem confronted me. Despite the myth, there are not many restrictions that can stop you applying to the police, but you do have to have good eyesight, and I was extremely short-sighted. A drastic solution was required. And I'm promised within, within a day or two, 20 to 20 vision. So I used to modern technology. We're on our way to Sesley Park for training HQ for my final interview. Uh, it's almost a year to the day since I began the application procedure. Uh, so, yeah, I'm quite nervous. Um, this could be a whole year's work up in smoke. Or, it could be full steam ahead, so we'll see how it goes. Candidates are not allowed into Manchester Police if they have had eye surgery in the past year, and I had. I would undergo an eye test at the medical. I sailed through the eye test and seemed to do well in all the interviews, but during three months of gruelling assessments and physical examinations, oddly enough, I was never asked my opinions on race. New recruits spend two weeks at the Greater Manchester Police College before going off to Bruges Police Training Centre where they join probationers from all over the North West and North Wales. If accepted, it would be five months before they got onto the streets. We would find out if the next generation of officers held racist views and if so, would their attitudes affect the way they did their job? And also, were the police doing enough to stamp racism out? It costs around £1,500 to fully equip the modern day police officer. You get everything, from the state of the art riot gear right down to a new pair of size 9 Doc Martens. I would have to repay this and my salary at the end of the investigation, but for now, I had to work out a way to fit a hidden camera into my uniform. For the modern policeman, a set of shiny new attitudes is just as important as the kit. I've just finished checking off my uniform, which I was issued with today. It was my first day. Almost immediately, racism was on, on the agenda. Our tutor told us in no uncertain terms that uh, the one thing that would surely get us dismissed immediately from the force without appeal was the use of uh, either one of four words. Those four words were nigger, coon, wog and packy. Uh, so it's clear that um, the tutors take the issue of racism very seriously indeed. I made a note in my diary about the Manchester Police stance on the use of racist language. This was the benchmark for our investigation and anyone using these words or displaying negative racial stereotypes would be a target. I wanted to find out if the practice reflected the policy. And if I found anyone breaching policy, watch them to see how far they were prepared to go. Would they go beyond using racist language and carry their prejudices onto the streets? During the initial training period, the class was constantly reminded of the appropriate language policy. There's four words which you cannot say. Negro, The instructor added an extra one to the list, Negro, but the message was crystal clear. 
The tutor said that anyone breaking the rules would be dealt with severely, but not everything we heard was so unequivocal. The police union, the police federation, made it clear that while they rejected racism, they would still defend those who used inappropriate language. But while the establishment seemed desperate to stamp racism out, on the other hand, we have the police federation in an address to the new intake gave an example of a young man who used the word nigger in public. A complaint was made and he was facing the sack. But the Police Federation hired the best lawyers and were able to get the young man off with just a fine of 13 days wages. I couldn't find out the details of this incident, but it certainly sent me a mixed message as a raw recruit attesting my loyalty to the Crown. We were tonight presented with our warrant cards which give full powers of arrest despite the fact that neither I nor anyone in my class has any idea how to use those powers. But the evening was, it was emotionally charged. Um, everyone's friends and family were there, except mine, oh, for obvious reasons. My parents don't know anything about what I'm doing, I can't tell them. And that was quite sad for me in a, in a way. Um, I did feel strangely proud of what I was doing. My next step was to attend the Bruges Regional Police Training Centre. My class came from four different forces, Greater Manchester, North Wales, Cheshire and Merseyside. By coincidence, the only Asian in the entire intake of 120 was in my class. Right from the start, the issue of racism was very high on the agenda. Step will not tolerate racist, homophobic, sexist behaviour, harassment or intimidation in any form. We lived in sparsely furnished box rooms with paper-thin walls on the college campus. My room was kitted out with secret cameras, and I was always worried that my cover would be blown. We'd been warned that our rooms could be searched by trainers at any time. I wanted to get to know as many people as possible. PC Andy Hall was not in my class, but we socialised together. Andy had spent 15 months as a policeman in London. He wanted to live in Manchester, so he had to retrain along with the rest of us, but he'd been through it all before. At first, it seemed like he had little time for what he called the old school racist officers, but he was scathing about equal opportunities training. What was it like in the Met with all that stuff? Because of that Stephen Lawrence thing. Close it over. Because that Stephen Lawrence thing, they dedicated a week to it. The yeah. first opening week was called Diversity Week. And you had members of the community coming in, <laughs> black, black people, Afro Caribbean, really fucking. We wait the police saying, like, they think we all discriminate against them because they're black. Mm. The thing with London yeah. is, the majority of street robbers are black. Are black. That's a fact, that. And in Hackney in particular, they just run riot. So they they use that as reasonable grounds to go and stop a black person mm. and search them. Andy Hall betrayed the racist stereotyping that we had been told was unacceptable. Next day, it was my turn for the diversity class and more talk about racism. We're seeing a big increase in the British National Party now. Um, get involved in, in, in various ways and again it's all on this way of so-called you know patriotism and, 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 and you, you know you can make a lot of links to the way that uh, well the way that the Nazi party did it really. They also told us that we should expect to encounter during our careers 
a very high number of racist officers. He said that many held very deeply entrenched prejudicial views on race and despite an ongoing education program within the force on race relations, it had so far failed to eradicate the problem. Andy was becoming more open with me. That night, he came back to my room again. I would never say this in class. If you did not discriminate and you did not bring out your prejudices, you'd be a shit copper. Do you know what? Really? If you was on the street, Mark, and you wouldn't stop anyone because of the colour, because of the race, because of how they dress, because of how they finger, you'd be a shit copper. I mean, we used to drive down the road and say, he looks a dodgy and stop him. That, that is practical policing. It is, mate. Um, and, and nine times out of ten, you're right. But in training environment, you can't be seen to do it because it's discrimination, it's, um, it's, it's against equal opportunities. But when you're on the street, you will fucking pick up it. Members of my class were beginning to relax in my company. PC Adrian Harrison was comfortable that the police were racist as an institution. This surprised me as he'd been a social worker before joining the force. So did you, I mean, did you know then, before he joined up, that the, the whole force was totally racist? Definitely. Did you? Oh yeah. You cool with that, eh? I'm cool with it, yeah. Because at the end of the day, I've, for the last nine years, I've been working for an organisation who is totally <coughs> um, politically correct. Because there was only one Asian in our intake, I paid very close attention to the attitude of the recruits towards him. To protect him, we are not showing his face and we are bleeping his name. He said he had become a constable only three weeks after applying. My application had taken months. I found there was a lot of bad feeling about him. It could have been simply the perception that he had been fast-tracked into the police, or it could have been motivated by more sinister feelings of racial prejudice. Uh, this week has seen a real change in dynamics in the classroom. There is a growing hostility. Out of the 18 people in my class, I have now heard more than half, uh, 10 to be exact, complain about in some way, uh, ranging from, you know, little comments to fairly biting criticism. The application to the police uh, was rushed through by all, by all accounts by his own um, admission. He told us all that he received a personal call from the chief inspector imploring him to apply. Now, this has got a lot of people's backs up and <clears throat> many people are bitter about the, what they perceive as preferential treatment. Over the next few weeks I recorded a whole range of remarks. What struck me though was the increasingly personal attacks on him, with people saying he was fat, smelly and irritating. He also told me that the smell really annoyed him. He said he could not stand the smell of curry. and it was to get much worse. Life at the training college was pretty predictable. We went to our lessons, did fitness training, and in the evenings, we ended up in the college bar. After it closed one night, PC Rob Pulling, PC Keith Cheshire, and I headed back to my room and the secret cameras. Hey boys. We were passing my flask of whiskey and discussing the cold that was going around the class. I had a cold, so it was doing me fucking heading. Who gave you the cold? I don't know, I think it's just went down the flask, didn't it? I've got to be honest now, in front of you, Keith. The fucking curse of the class. It started off with yeah. I think it did. I was going to say, it's the fucking curse of the class. It's the fucking... The fucking pain in the arse of the fucking old world. <laughs> Am I speaking out of turn? No, 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 you're not. But, but, no, it's extra. PC Pulling was urged to keep his voice down as the Asian officer's room was right next to mine. One person. It's nice with you. You know, I make jokes about black people. Everybody does. Yeah. 
you know, but you don't do it to their face. No. And you don't do it in class. It's like games. I mean, my best mate is black. You know, never love. Take a piss I mean, out I, of I each I other. Bet you don't, I bet you bet you bet you bet you, you, you I mean I bet you pretty second nature to you you know, to use, you know, the, the kind of words that are forbidden here. I mean mm. you probably you probably use it. Black nigger. Nigger. They use that themselves. We can't use nigger. What about, I mean, what no, I'd call the black one what, to his face, what, a nigger. What would you call it? I'd call him a packy, if I was perfectly honest. Yeah, but I mean, if you was trying to be politically correct, then you'd just call him Asian, wouldn't you? Yeah, but if I mean, you were I'm, in I'm the street... I'm talking about, you know, talking about in the street, you know. I'd call him a packy. I'm call. fucking I'm laying just, all my cards on the table. Call you call guys. anybody of a... <clears throat> It could have been the drink talking. Although he used racist language, I think PC Cheshire was wrestling with these prejudices. But PC Pooling was different. He was proud of his use of language. He knew that it was enough to have him thrown out of the force. Even if 20 years ago, this talk was commonplace. I think you're referring to the phrase black bastard. Now that's a common phrase which is used throughout this land. This unthinking racism was described then as practical and common sense. PC Pilling's comments were an echo of these views, which did so much to damage race relations. These were the views of recruits at Hendon 20 years ago. It makes me cringe when I see a black bloke going up with a white woman. Frankly, I don't particularly have any liking whatsoever for wogs, nignogs and packets. Just putting it bluntly, kick them out. If a police officer calls a black man a nigger, shouldn't he be dismissed? No, why should a, no, indeed not. It, like everything else, why should he, why should he be dismissed for calling him a nigger? Because I mean, it's I a have term a, of abuse. That's a matter of opinion. It seemed to me the difference was that now these views had been driven underground, and the only way to capture them was by going undercover. The question though was still the same. If you held these views, did it affect the way you did your job on the street? Right Dave, let's go get Amu. So I went for a night out in Manchester with Andy Hall. I was wearing a secret camera, but it failed me at a crucial time and only recorded sound. Yeah, what, what we'll do, I mean, I'll see if you have any further problems, I'll leave you my details. Thank you, right, that would be so kind of I had met PC Carl Jones of GMP at training school. I knew he was a racist. In his last job, he had charged ethnic minority customers extra. He called it BAT. Black had attacks. But you just got to be careful. I'm all right at the moment. I'm not slipping up. And I probably won't slip up, but I do. I don't like it. Do you think your problems out in the street, though? I definitely won't call him when I'm out on the street. Definitely won't what? I definitely won't say anything to him on the street. But I do hate him. Oh no, I, I hate him. My mum used to say, like, when I got accepted, she said, well, you're going to have to change, otherwise you'll be kicked out in two weeks. To be honest, I don't mind. Blacks. The blacks. It's just black as they claim everything. Almost four months later, I met him at a pub near his village. He had been policing the streets of Oldham for five weeks now. I wanted to find out if his time on the beat had affected his views. I'll be honest with you, I was absolutely <coughs> crapping myself going over them. Mm. Especially in my previous life of work, I used to fucking rip them off. And I did. Bats, I used to call it. Black I did tanks. I'm not <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. But, I'll tell you what, man, it is amazing, mate. Like, none, none of the packy lads wear seatbelts. So they're all getting it tomorrow if I see any. Right, they think they're fucking brilliant. Carl said he'd been giving out Horties, the form given to motorists for producing their documents at the police station. We did three artists the other day, purely on people not wearing the seatbelts, and every single one of them were a pack. Mm. Because what, what <laughs> tries to tell me to do is to stop a car for a reason, no <clears> rather <throat> than just stopping them and say, what the fuck does that mean? Well, I've just stopped you, mate, two things really. You've got a brake light out, there. you're not wearing your seatbelt, I'm going to do a document check on you. And he said, right, what we'll do today, Carl, is we'll, we'll just do art. He said, well, what bother with, like, non-endorsements or whatever? He said, we'll just stop people now that have, like, doing an offence for us to start with. I went, right, OK, then. And every single one of them, he said, right, we might have to stop a white person on the weekend just to even the figures up. If this was happening and the stopping of white people to even the figures up went on, 
Then it would disguise the true picture and could throw into question the figures that could identify the racist targeting of blacks and Asians. Despite what I was discovering from my fellow recruits, I found that the majority of the officers on the streets that I had close dealings with were not racist. There's so many racist people are kicked off on us just because we're black. Talk in that place. Because we are black. I've not been done by police before. I'm a nice guy, yeah? And if anyone knows me, yeah, I'm a nice guy. But because I'm black. Just keep your voice down, mate. Their jobs were very stressful, and even when they did nothing wrong, they could be accused of racism. On this arrest, the black youths were well behaved, and it appeared that the white man had provoked them. He scarpered. But this time, we caught him. Monsieur, I've done nothing! Good morning. Could I have a double sausage and egg meal, please? And there certainly wasn't much racial tension in Hazel Grove, but not all officers were free of prejudice. I spent a day with PC Andy Turley instead of my usual tutor constable. He had been a policeman for two and a half years and thought that anti-racist initiatives were a waste of time. What about the Asians though? I mean, do they, do they cause you... Not really, because, because we don't have that many. Problems. We don't have many uh, ethnic minorities around here at all. What do you think of them? To be honest, I think they paint the fucking arms. They rip the fucking system big style off the record, and uh, they fucking and they'll try and pull fast one on every time. Like around here, if, if there's a car full of black people or a car full of Asians, you pull it. Because we've got no, we've got no really ethnic minorities around here. You can guarantee it'll be full of shit coming across the rail bar doing something. I would put a car full of black lads, and one of them was wearing body armour, so it's like that. Ah, everybody out, hell. So I mean, if, if you saw if you saw a car with a black lad or an Asian lad, you'd pull it. Not ones or twos, but you know. If, no, two, two or three black yeah, lads. Yeah, yeah, I'd pull it. Just finishing completing the car camera rig for um, my journey to Glasgow. I'm just about to go and pick up PC Andy Hall, and we are travelling to Glasgow tonight to go to a Rangers match. Andy Hall loves football. The best way to find out if he was putting his racist views into action was to spend a day with him off duty. Seven weeks into the job, and he was prepared to give me more lectures on his version of practical policing. Most blacks in London carry drugs and had offensive weapons. Most blacks in London carry drugs. That's the fucking way it was. Even the chief commander come out and said most black people in London commit robberies and crimes. And fucking... I mean, that thing that Michael Todd said about GMP being right, institutionally racist. Yeah. That was Dave Wall, not that. Dave that Wall. was the last one. institutionally racist. I've had the race car played on me in my seven weeks that I've been there. I stopped a, an Indian bloke and did a, did a free pointer for him going through a red light. And all he fucking said to me was, you're doing this because I'm fucking black, I have a fucking cousin from India. So I said, yeah, fucking am, there's your ticket, fuck off. <laughs> Wonder how fucking is <laughs> doing. Let <laughs> get searched off his own colleague. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> on this way home. Woo! Woo! Fucking hell. He um He was a money. You think being in the job though, for such for you know a length of time, makes you approach people differently or it makes you approach a white person differently to an Asian person. Yeah. Because all Asians I know are lying bastards. And that's got to affect the way you do your job, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, the Metropolitan Police is the worst. The worst of what? Racist. Fuck. That force, man. Jesus. Do you think that it will have changed? No. 
Yeah. So that will never change because the selection procedures for the police. There's no selection procedure for any job, I don't think, that can ever stop a person having their own views on certain things. If you're out on patrol, say, fucking hell. He's got no belt on, he's an agent, I bet he's like, f***ing stop that. Fucking, not wrong with that. I've done that. Have you noticed the BMPs fucking shooting up? More and more people are su supporting them as the fucking thing is going on. Do you not support them? Not about the gun killer. In the job. He's not dog killing. Is it not? <laughs> if I could, I would. Do you not write? Do you agree with the politics? I don't. Do you agree with throwing the whole ethnic minorities out of the country? Yeah. We should have armed guards on that Calais fucking crossing with guns and any like the oil tunnel tries to get over, fucking shoot. Five months of intensive training had failed to shift Andy Hall's deep-seated prejudices. He admitted he was allowing his racist views to affect the job. While officers like Andy Hall were on the streets of Manchester, it was hard to see how the force could rid itself of the racist label. I hadn't enjoyed deceiving the good officers I met, but the more I saw of PCs Hall and Pooling, it was clear that it was in the public interest to expose them. Hello? Rob? Hi, mate. It's Mark, can you speak? Yeah, yeah. Cool. How you doing, mate? Alright, you? Yeah. Good, good, good. How's everything going? Going great, Rob. Going great. Really enjoying myself. Really yeah. enjoying myself. Your job's a dream, isn't it? So, you've met a few like-minded colleagues, have you? Everyone's like it, mate. Really? I'm on my way to North Wales again for another rendezvous with PC Rob Pulling. During our last conversation, Rob took great delight telling me that the majority of his new colleagues were just as racist as him. So tonight I want to find out a little bit more about those people and find out exactly what Rob has been up to in his first six weeks on the street. Do you reckon someone like you coming out of Drews would then, shall we say, racist tendencies just fit right in North Wales Police? I'd be on the outside right if I did. Really? Yeah. I would be one of the lads if I did my little thing. So have you had the chance to put your views into action yet? Gave one to a powerful penalty ticket, right? Yeah. You gave... Then, then just a kicker in the bollocks, even more, I gave him another £60 one for no tax. £260 and six points I put on that fucker's licence. What, an easy? Rob told me that half an hour before, he had stopped a white woman with no insurance, but had used his discretion to let her off with no fine. He behaved very differently when he stopped the Asian motorist. How did you do that? I haven't got any flowers to use my discretion because they're on this operation. I said, what I've got to do now is issue with £200 with the penalty with six points on your licence with the no insurance. His eyes filled up. Thank you, officer. I'm afraid you haven't got any insurance, but that's what you are, sir. If you leave here now, you'll be committing other offences. I cannot allow you to leave. Him, his wife, and three kids out in front of your car to walk half a mile back to the holiday camp. Give me a It's amazing, so you're in exactly, two exactly the same situations. And you, and, you let one, and you let the white one go, and you've done the Asian. Go for the higher one with them. Yeah, but no bother, mate. And I went to bed that night and I fell straight asleep like a baby with a clear conscience. <laughs> My time as a police officer demonstrated to me that there are policies now in place to combat discrimination, 
and they are failing. I could only find this out by going undercover. The training had failed to root out the racists. If anything, it made them more aware that their views were seen as wrong, but this was driving the racism underground. They paraded their racism in different ways. Some used racially abusive language, others went further and admitted they would put their racism into practice. Rob Pooling was by far the most racist officer I met, and what he told me was deeply disturbing. All are setting back the police's efforts to cleanse the force of racism. I hope my investigation will help this process, and allow the majority of police officers to get on with their job of enforcing the law without prejudice. help the police investigate the racism we have uncovered, we will be giving them our evidence. The police declined to take part in tonight's programme, but the Greater Manchester Police have issued this statement on behalf of the police service. Three Greater Manchester Police officers and one from North Wales were suspended from duty yesterday. An investigation will now be conducted during which the officers will remain suspended from duty. The investigation has been voluntarily referred to the Independent Police Complaints Authority for their supervision. Greater Manchester Police is firmly committed to taking further action against any other officers who are shown on the programme making racist comments. We are disappointed that despite repeated requests we have not yet received a copy of the programme from the BBC to enable us to take immediate action. However, in the light of the information we have received from elsewhere, we have no hesitation in suspending these officers pending a thorough investigation. We have always made it clear that any racist behaviour in whatever form will not be tolerated within Greater Manchester Police. We will be unrelenting in our actions against racism both inside and outside the Greater Manchester Police Service. Right now! A fully equipped elite force attempt to try